Welcome back to this course on digital systems. So in the last week, we looked at the idea of the sum of product, product of sum, canonical representation for a Boolean function. And we also discussed about how you can simplify it using, using the laws of Boolean algebra and uh, even represent it using standard and or and the inverter, right? You needed an AND gate, OR gate and an inverter in order to represent any arbitrary Boolean function, right? So the AND gate, of course, uh, was basically, you know, if you took the sum of product terms, it was essentially saying you can implement it using uh, uh, an N input AND gate, right? For each, uh, for each min term, right? And the OR gate is, of course, the number of uh, min terms that are there in the sum of product expression, right? So therefore, if you have uh, AND gates, or gates with variable number of inputs, you should be able to implement any arbitrary Boolean function, right? Uh, however, the Boolean simplification, we also saw that it was very important to simplify this Boolean expression in order to reduce the number of gates. And therefore, we embarked on this process of trying to simplify the expression using the laws of Boolean algebra by grouping them appropriately and stuff like that. So now what we are going to do is we are going to look at a more sort of a very systematic method of doing the same thing when the Boolean function is quite small and tractable, okay? Like we're talking about two variable, three variable or four variable functions. Five variable you can do, but beyond that, it's going to be hard to do it with the method that I'm going to talk about, right? So this method of Boolean simplification Right, is called the Carnot map method. Carnot map method. Map method. Okay, or alternately, we will just call it the K map method. Okay, so. Let's start with a very simple example, right? We'll start with the uh, simple uh, case of a two input OR gate. OR gate, okay? So what we have here now is function a, B and Y 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1. The OR gate truth table is of course 0, 1, 1, 1. Any one input is high, the output will be a high, right? So I'll just draw the symbol here for completion. Okay, for so A, B and Y. Okay, so now what, of course, what we did earlier was to simply take the sum of product terms. We basically said that the, uh, you know, this was going to be represented, you know, as uh, this f of a comma b was going to be represented as uh, m0, no, m1, small m1, min term 1, min term 2, and min term 3, okay? And this was going to be further simplified as a bar b plus a b bar plus a b, right? And then we were able to simplify this expression and effectively show that this was equal to a plus b, okay? So this was rather, um, you know, a straightforward thing to do for us in, and of course, if you use the product of some representation, this A plus B comes out to be, uh, uh, you know, comes out straight away. However, let's assume that we want to now do this simplification in a more systematic way. So here is how you do it with a two variable K map method. Okay. So what we'll do is along the Y direction, we'll go on the MSB along the x direction, we will go 
we will iterate on the LSB. Okay. So, this one is B bar B. Okay, I will tell you what these things mean A bar and A. So, if you look at this, this is 0, 1 and then we have to talk about 2 and 3. Is that right? No, I would think it should be like this. Okay, 0, 1, 2 and 3, right? So, let us see what we get out of this, okay? So, what we have here is essentially your 0, 1, 2, 3 simply corresponding, correspond to the min terms that have a 1 in them, okay? So, what are the min terms? We simply have 1 here, then we have 1 here and we have a 1. So, maybe I will put the ones from the truth table in a different color so that it does not confuse with the mean terms. Okay? So, now what this effectively is telling us is the output seems to be a high irrespective of the change in A. Okay? So, if B happens to be 1, then it seems to suggest that it does not depend on the state of A. Likewise, if you look at you know, uh, and how did I get that information? I am looking, getting that information by looking at this column. Likewise, if you look at this row here, it seems to suggest that the output is 1 irrespective of what the value of B is as long as A is high. Okay, I am saying A is high because it this A is telling us what the state of the value, I mean what the value of A is. When that is 1, it does not matter whether B is 0 or 1. So, what you can do now is to simply group these terms like this. Okay? So, it, what does this actually mean in terms of the Boolean simplification? Right? So, this is, if you look at it, by the way, this is M1, M2 and M3. Right? So, what I have done here is by grouping M1 and M3, what have I done? I have grouped M1 and M3. So, what have I, what is, what does that mean? You take B out common, it is A bar plus A. Of course, the plus represents an OR. Okay, and M2 is untouched at this point. Right? Therefore, this has to simply be equal to B because A plus A bar is 1. Right? And then I have A, B bar. Now, earlier when we did Boolean simplification, we used the distributive law to say that this is nothing but B plus A into B plus B bar. Okay. Here we are doing something slightly different. What we are going to do is, we already know in Boolean algebra that X or X is equal to X only. So, it does not matter if you add the same term again to the Boolean expression. Okay, so what I am going to do here is, I am going to write this Boolean expression as M1 plus M2 plus M3 and I will add another M3. Okay, M3 is a Boolean literal and therefore that can be considered as X, adding X, X or X is still X. Therefore, it, I am basically adding another M3 term. And then I am going to group M1 and M3 and then I will group M2 and M3. Okay, that is the basic idea that we are implementing here. So, what happens is the M1 plus M3 we already showed will give you a B. Okay, plus A B bar. Okay, this by the way is M2 plus A B. This is the second M3 that we are talking about, this one, right? This is the second M3 that we introduced and here again what I can do, I will write this as B plus A into B bar plus A, sorry, B bar plus B, which of course will simply reduce to B plus A, okay? So, effectively, you look at what I am doing, I am going to go ahead and uh, group this term, right? 
So for every grouping, I am going to write the output as you know one some uh, some uh, uh, one min term, right? Which is simplified by uh, by you know doing some boolean operation. So here, if you look at you know this column, we are saying that the output y or f of a b is simply going to be b because that's the common variable across these two and then it is not dependent on a so therefore that simply comes out right that is not even there in the uh, min term or the simplified min term that we write likewise the second term right what i am going to do i am going to look at this row and a is the common variable and therefore i am going to write that as a into another term but it doesn't depend on b and therefore the final answer is simply a plus b right and therefore you get the answer in a very simple manner so the best way to master all this is to do more examples so i will consider f a b in the following manner okay summation of um let me see 0 okay this is not exactly is this this is not an or gate okay so we'll see what this expression is okay i am not going to even write the truth table at this point right i am going to simply go ahead and do exactly what we discussed i am going to iterate over a along the rows i am going to iterate over b along the columns right so this is 0 1 3 2 okay now what do i have here i have the output uh, so by the way this is b bar b okay this is a bar and a okay so why does this actually come about because m0 corresponds to a bar b bar the small m0 corresponds to a bar b bar m1 out here okay corresponds to a bar b m2 corresponds to a b and m3 correspond i mean m2 corresponds to a b bar and m3 corresponds to a b okay that's what this whole uh, you know b bar b and a bar a mean okay so now what do i do i am going to write this term here one Okay, the last term of course is a 0 and therefore I have to ignore that. I cannot bring that into my Boolean simplificate. So, what do you do now? Simply group terms like this. Okay, maybe I will do this in two different colors so that I can, yeah. Okay, so now my output f of a, b is going to be, so you look at the term here going along the column b bar is the common term it does not matter what a is and therefore this is going to just be b bar ok. Then I am going to do a an or to get the remaining you know uh, sums uh, uh, remaining terms in the sum of product expression <coughs> of course in a simplified manner right. So now what you do, you are going to go and look at this magenta thing along the row. A bar is common, it does not depend on B. So therefore, this is A bar plus B bar. And we know that laws of Boolean algebra, you simplify, you can get this as A into B whole bar. Okay. So effectively, this is a NAND gate. Okay, now you can you can easily uh, you know try another example of uh, okay. By the way, here what did we do by uh, grouping the magenta and this red right? The common 
term that was repeated was m0 right so effectively we we wrote this as m0 m1 m2 we rewrote this as um, m0 or m2 or in the magenta we did m0 or m1 so this m0 was added twice effectively right so i urge you to please go ahead and try uh, you know the nor2 gate for example right you can try the nor2 gate you can also try uh, okay maybe we should also try the xor gate okay let us see what happens remember the xor gate was a b bar plus a bar b so actually the real question is is it possible to even simplify this any further right so if you look at the truth table we basically said uh, you know I, okay i'll not write it in the truth table form i'll just write it as summation m1 comma m2 right so let's see what the truth table looks like in an xor gate no i'll give it another line here so i have again b bar b okay i am going to iterate over b a a bar a 0 1 2 and 3 right so we had uh, m1 and m2 so what does this mean it only means that this is zero this is zero now remember uh, you are only allowed to group terms row wise or column wise you cannot group terms diagonally you cannot do this why because in the boolean uh, ultimately remember every grouping that you do here has to correspond to a law in the boolean algebra that is going to allow you to eliminate or simplify an expression right when you go diagonally both terms have changed it's not that for example here you do not have you cannot take a common or b common and do something with it right a a has become a bar going from m1 to m2 a has become a bar and b bar has become b so therefore this is strictly not allowed okay and you cannot be doing any diagonal simplification and therefore for the xor gate it turns out this is the simplified expression this is the exact final simplified expression that you can get okay right